Good afternoon, Manchester, and welcome to the March 6, 2020 edition of The Pulse. I'm Annabelle Lawson. And I'm Olivia McHugh. Thank you so much for joining us on this special athletics-focused episode. This week on The Pulse, Jessica Party dives into the legacy of a retiring MHS swim coach and the lasting impact you will leave. October of 1951, and I've been doing it part-time ever since. And then, Lena Morozki highlights the success of a young MHS entrepreneur in her personal training business. Injuries, if they have pain, they have, you're all at different levels. We have all this and much more on this special edition of The, the Pulse. Pulse. TV studio, The Pulse, starts now. Mel Siebold has been the girls' swim coach since 2006 and the boys' head swim coach since 2010. Recently, this poolside fixture has announced his retirement from coaching. Jessica Party heads up to the pool to tie up ends with his monumental coaching career. You know, it's been so many years Mel Siebold, coach of both the girls and boys swim team, is stepping back from his position at MHS after over 10 years. Although he started in 2006 at MHS, his coaching career did not begin there. I started teaching swimming at a private swim school where my swim coach was the manager. That's what started me and I just liked it and that was in October of 1951 and I've been doing it part time ever since. He's seen hundreds of athletes grow under his wing. I'll miss that. That's one reason I'll probably uh, do some officiating for swim mates. I've done it before. I did it in California, and I have officiated here as well. Senior Captain Noah Luby has been a part of Mel's team for the past four swim seasons. I'm just going to miss all his knowledge. I mean, there's no one that's been doing it longer. Um, there's no one who knows more about this sport than he does. Thank you, Mel. 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 Thank you, Mel, for your dedication to all the teams you have worked with. You will certainly be missed. From Manchester, this has been Jessica Party reporting. Congratulations to Coach Mel on his retirement, and a sincere thank you from all of us here at the Pulse for your hard work over the years. Annabelle, I know you're a member of the girls' swim team, so Mel retiring must really hit home for you. Absolutely. We're going to miss him so much next year. MHS offers a special opportunity for teachers to be able to coach sports when the day is done. There's an advantage to having a teacher in the building during the day, or on the field, or in the court in the evening. Emily Madden visits the classrooms of teachers who take on a different role after 2 p.m. Athletes get results, coaches get them there. There are a handful of teachers here at MHS who are teachers by day and coaches by the afternoon. But what exactly goes into being a teacher and a coach? One of the many teachers who took on coaching on top of their duties during the day is Mr. McClory. Really, really good. Really bad. Really good. A math teacher who also coaches boys basketball. I think that the best part of coaching is relating to students over something that we both have a shared interest for. As much as I love math, the students don't always feel the same way, but when we're both um, at basketball practice or at games, we both share that um, enjoyment of the game. So it's kind of something we can bond over. With the duality of their profession, teachers are able to create friendships with students they will see on the daily. I did it wrong. Eugene has been playing basketball here at MHS for three years and has had a relationship with McClory since freshman year. Since he's my coach and my teacher, he can help me on the court and in the classroom. It's like, and if I have a problem with anything in school, I could go to him and talk to him about it. Senior varsity basketball player Mike Rowe has been playing basketball at MHS for four years and has felt McClory's influence since his junior year. Yeah, my freshman year, McClory played me a lot. He really believed in me and helped me uh, want to work harder and become a better player. So he was, I really looked, looked up to him as a player. Eugene believes that having a teacher as a coach has a strong impact on students. It gives, it gives kids something, like gives kids somebody to talk to if they need to talk to somebody. Like it's easy to connect through basketball. And since you guys like both have that love for basketball, 
it's easier to talk to him and you can just relate to other things. To be a teacher and a coach, you have to put in a lot of effort and time to get the job done. Once we start games, um, probably like between 25 and 30, because I'm at all three games on their home games and on the road to travel and stuff. Um, but then when we're practicing, about 10 to 14. Although being a coach is a lot of work, Mr. McClory believes it is all worth it in the end. Um, and it, you feel accomplished at the end of it all the time. Um, and just to have boys who are playing basketball at the age of 14 to 15 years old, it's really important time for them. Um, so to try to be a good role model and a positive influence in that capacity. It is clear to see that having a teacher as a coach creates bonds that will last a lifetime. Thank you to teachers such as Mr. McClory for putting extra time and effort into teaching students a sport that they are passionate about. From Manchester and The Pulse, this has been Emily Manor reporting. A huge thank you to all the teachers who spend double the amount of time at MHS to coach and mentor student athletes. With the encouragement and training from coaches comes the successful accomplishment of athletes. A team that has found recent luck on the field, or ice rather, is the hockey team. Ben Roy skates on over to the rink to check out this team. Since 2009, Manchester High School students have combined with students from Newington, Cromwell, and Berlin to form the Newington Co-op Hockey Team. They compete in the Division III League for CIAC, and this year they have been at the top of the standings throughout the season. However, one Manchester player has been making a name for himself on the ice. Pucks in the net are a rare setting when you have number 29 in the ice for Newington Co-op. Under the mask and pads is Andrew Fogarty, who is one of the four students representing MHS on the Newington Co-op ice hockey team. Not only is Andrew one of the top goalies in the state, but is also an honor roll student here at MHS. I haven't really took much different approaches. I've been just working on my game mostly, just like staying out in the crease and staying in front of the puck. Tyler Leavitt is another one of the four players representing MHS on the team. I think it's good to have a goalie that you can trust in because when you're down in big situations and big games, you know your goalie's going to make the save, so it's just up to your team to put the puck in the net. Not only does Andrew back up his teammates on the ice, but he also supports those that support him. And what's a hockey game without fans? A regular member of our hockey student section notices the impact Andrew has on um, the game. Being a fan and being able to go to the games and have a goalie that you can trust in the back of the net and trust and cheer for really makes the games fun and just makes it easy going and it kind of relieves the stress of like being a fan and having to watch your team battle in the back. Andrew certainly brings a lot of talent to the hockey team and best wishes to them as they continue on their playoff surge this season. From the Pulse and the rank this has been, Benjamin Rowe reporting. Wishing the hockey team the best of luck in the end of their season as they start the first round of playoffs. While some MHS students are finding success on the rink, others are finding at the gym. Senior Julia Leon has recently started her own personal training business, Julia L Fitness. Lena Morawski can't wait to showcase this student's success. Julia Leon has had a passion for fitness and last year she took it to a new level. I realized I was like, I don't have to just keep this to myself. I can just do it with others and make it more of a career than anything. To do this, Julia became certified as a personal trainer after taking the ISA course last year, even though she has had yet to reach the typical minimum age for such certification. Julia credits former cross country coach and fellow trainer Miss Bell with mentoring her. And she said one day, said, I want to become a personal trainer. And I'm like, really? So I explained to her the steps, but she literally did all the research on which program would fit her budget, her lifestyle. But their stories sometimes diverge. Miss Bell has done everything for me. It took me three to four months to do my certification. She literally did it in a month. That's not me, that's all her. I would go to her just for questions, you know, how do I do this, how do like I do that? Like she did everything. And I honestly, like all the stuff I know, especially in the gym, is because of her. With her new certification, Julia has begun to share this insight on how to train with others. Junior Katie Lee is one of the people who has taken something from her work with Julia. If she sees you burning out in the last circuit, she'll make sure you keep going. 
But what she takes from that experience might be different from others for one simple reason. Every single person is so different with their fitness journey. So when you're applying your skill to someone else, you have to take in consideration like what they have. If they have injuries, if they have pain, they have, you're all at different levels. Julia is putting her talents to good use and it isn't going unnoticed. Just the doors and opportunities that she opened for herself at the age of 17 is endless. She made me love going to the gym. It is clear to see that with hard work and dedication, you are able to achieve your goals. This is exactly what Julia Leon did. From The Post, this has been Lena Morosky reporting. That's all the time we have for you today, Manchester. The polls will be taking a break as we head to Washington, D.C. for the Student Television Network Convention. But join us at the end of March for more stories on the Manchester community. If you have any story ideas you think should be included in our program, email Mr. Larson at b11elars at mpspride.org. Make sure to follow us on social media and check out our past work by heading to mhstelevision.com. I'm Annabelle Watson. And I'm Olivia McHugh, and this has been a special edition of The, the Pulse. Pulse.